Hello, everybody. So when talking about steady state performance of a control system, we generally talk about steady state error or steady state tracking performance, where we try to minimize error signal as time goes to infinity for a specific kind of input, such as step input, ramp input, or uh, quadratic input. Okay. But in uh, digital and uh, continuous control systems, there are different kind of inputs, which is important, but they are kind of unwanted inputs, okay, F such as noise, disturbance, and uncertainty. We want our system to be robust, these kind of uh, disturbances and inputs, and we want to eliminate these disturbance, and we don't want to see them uh, affecting our output, especially at the steady state. Okay, so in today's lecture, we will try to analyze the state error of a system or performance of a system for a specific type of input, which is called process, process noise or process uncertainty, which affects our system or control systems right after the control action. Okay, so this is the computed control action. Okay. But uh, because of disturbance, our effective control action is kind of different, uh, or slightly different, uh, can be uh, from our computed action, and which of course can affect our system. Okay. So the goal is, since this is now a two-input, uh, multiple-input, uh, single-output system, eliminate one of the input and try to analyze the system with respect to from one input to the other. Okay. So the goal is very simple. N of k, we will assume that N of k is a unit step input. We will later assume that. And we want to have effect of N of k at the output as small as possible, possible zero. So what we are going to do is we are going to compute the y steady state for a specific kind of N of k. Okay, good. So let's try to compute y of z. Okay, y of z divided by N of z. That's good. So what is y of z? Okay, so y of z, okay, y of z is technically a sampled y of k, is equal to g of z, okay, and uh, what is the input of g of z? It's equal to n of z plus, okay, e of z times g c of z, okay, good, y of z is technically equal to, this is, let's say, u of k, Okay, no, no, that's it. Okay, I don't need to deal with that. Okay, that's good. So we already computed that, so that's good. So what we need to do is we need to eliminate error from here. Okay, we know that E of C, okay, E of C is equal to, as you can see, there's minus here, this is zero, minus Y of Z, that's good, okay? So Y of Z is equal to G of Z, n of z minus y of z times g c of z, g of z. Okay, from this perspective, y of z divided by n of z is equal to g of z divided by 1 plus g c of z times g of z. That's good. Okay, so this is the transfer function from disturbance input to the output. Okay. So before going to steady state error, let's try to analyze this. Okay, so g of c is the plant, a discretized plant trust function that we don't have any control, but g c of c is our control. Okay, so what we want from this behavior is beyond the steady state, in general, we want this value to be as small as possible. Okay, so potentially we want this to be equal to zero, right? So if the transfer function from disturbance to output is zero, that's great. Okay, in order to achieve that, what we need to achieve is g c of z, g of z magnitude for all possible of z's, which is related with uh, technically uh, the frequency response of the system, should be very, very large, potentially much larger than the g of z. Okay, so technically we want g c of z as a very large gain transfer function. So in this case, y of z divided by n of z can be approximated by this transfer function, kind of. This is like a lousy crude analysis of a, a control system, okay? So if you pick a controller which has a high gain, which you can technically eliminate the disturbance at the output, okay? So this is the basic idea. Now we will analyze this in a more systematic way, okay? So what we do is, we will assume that n of k is equal to u of k, right, times n, okay? So it's a unit step, it's step function, which has a weight, n, and we generally try to uh, minimize n as much as possible when designing our system, because this is an unwanted effect by calibration and other kind of effects, but they are kind of uh, existing in any system. There is always some sort of DC bias, DC error in 
many systems such as like column friction in mechanical systems or unwanted DC offset in electrical circuits. Okay, so that's good. So what we need to do is we need to compute Y steady state. Y steady state is equal to limit as Z goes to one, okay, one minus Z to the power minus one, Y of Z. Okay, so this is important. Then analyzing steady state performance with respect to disturbance noise kind of inputs, we look at the steady state response of Y. Okay, that's good. This is equal to limit as z goes to 1, 1 minus z to the power minus 1, g of z divided by 1 plus g of z times g of z times n of z. n of z is the z transform of the uh, disturbance input, which is unit step function. We already know that. Okay, so it is equal to the limit as z is going to 1, okay, so 1 minus z to the power minus 1, okay, and divided by 1 minus z to the power minus 1, because it's a unit step function, times g of z divided by 1 plus g c of z, g of z, okay, so if we technically simplify it, this is equal to limit as z is going to 1, okay, and n is a constant, g of z divided by 1 plus g c of z, g of z. Okay, that's good. So it is equal to n, which is equal to limit z is going to 1 g of z, which may not be very correct, but that's fine, plus limit when z is going to 1, g c of z divided g of z. Okay, so of course, keeping this like this is better. Okay, and I recommend you to use this uh, in your midterms uh, to be uh, more correct, but we can just look at this from a uh, analysis perspective. Okay, so uh, as you can see, the steady state error depends on the limit of g as z goes to infinity, also often the transfer function, which is g of c and g z as z is going to infinity. Okay, so what we need to do is, in order to understand the behavior, we need to look all of the ty type of the both plants and the uh, open up transfer function. Okay, so let's clean that. So let's do it quickly and try to figure out some pattern. Okay, that's good. So we already cleaned that. Okay, so so let's look at the plant first and what happens uh, that. Okay, so very good. So plant, plant or G of C. So if plant is a type zero system, okay, it's type zero system, okay, y steady state is equal to n, that's good, g1, now we know that g1 is constant, 1 plus g1 limit as z is going to 1, gc of z. Okay, so now we can just look at the controller, its type, and try to figure out the uh, steady state performance. Okay, that's good. So what we have is our controller can have a type zero system. Okay, type zero controller. In this case, what happens is y steady state error is simply equal to n over g c one. Okay, that's good. So if your controller and plant is a type zero system, y steady state error is constant. Okay, so we can we don't have any control of n. So in order to eliminate or diminish the steady state errors or steady state uh, response to disturbance, what you should do is you should increase GC1, which is the DC gain of your controller. So it means that if you apply a high gain controller, then you can technically uh, minimize but not eliminate steady state error. Okay, so let's analyze it from a different perspective. Okay, if uh, your controller is type positive, like n is greater than zero. So what happens is this limit will go to infinity, okay, then y steady state error will be equal to zero. Okay, so if your plant is type zero, okay, if you want zero steady state disturbance response, if you want to reject its disturbance perfectly, it means that you need to increase type of your controller. It's very similar to what we do in steady state error. If your uh, plant is type zero system, if you want to have a zero steady state error for unit step input, what you need to do is you need to increase the type of your 
controller. Okay, this is very easy, as you can see. Uh, but only thing that we should be careful is uh, we need to analyze both G and combine open up transfer function from this perspective. Okay, so that's good. So what we have, okay, there is a nice. So now let's uh, analyze this. Okay, let's clean that. Okay, now, okay, I'm sorry for that. Now let's analyze something else. Okay, so if plant is, okay, type M, which is greater than zero. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we have a plant and uh, plant type is like, it can be one or three or something else. Okay, then Y state state error is equal to N times limit when Z is going to one G of Z divided by one plus limit Z is going to one G of C times G C of C. Okay, so if your uh, plant type is uh, greater than one, this limit goes to infinity, right? This limit goes to infinity. That's good, we already know that. It's important uh, fact, but uh, this is also important, okay? So it goes to infinity, that's nice, or that may not be nice, but we still need to look at the controller, okay? So if your controller is type zero, type 0 GC of Z, then technically this is equal to GC of 1. This doesn't have any effect on the system. Then Y state state error is constant, right? Y state state error will be constant because there are two things that are going to infinite at the same rate, then you will have a constant state state error. Technically, it will be equal to like, no, it will be constant. Okay, so it's a constant, and I think it is equal to N, one plus uh, GC one, or no, no, it's not one plus, okay, N over GC one, GC one, okay, it's a constant state state error, uh, but still we have a control because if you increase your gain of the controller, you can still uh, diminish the error of the system, okay, so it's kind of a, a very similar concept, but if you increase the type of your controller, okay, type of your controller, then it's kind of easy to see that this is going to infinity. This is going to infinity. This is zero. Okay, it can be a little complicated. So this is zero. This is going to infinity. This is going to infinity in a double rate than the numerator. Since your denominator is going to infinity faster than numerator, your steady state error will be equal to zero. Okay, so the idea is uh, when looking at the state state response with, for a different kind of inputs other than the state state error, your computation uh, could depend on different kind of factors, and you should be careful when uh, doing some kind of like intuition and analysis. So in this type of analysis, I generally don't recommend you to just using the formulas or like the results that uh, already in the lecture notes, but just apply the final value theorem, find the output then try to uh, comment on the results, okay? Sometimes in this kind of scenarios, the intuition can fail you uh, for understanding the topic or like uh, computing the result. Okay, let's solve an example. Okay, good. So let's solve an example and try to use what we already obtained in this lecture, okay, and finish this topic. Okay, so in our case, okay, g of z is equal to, z minus 1 divided by z minus 0 0.5 g okay so this is no no I, I don't like this this is not a good uh, example i will use another one okay that's good so g of z is equal to okay that's better 0 z over z minus 0 0.5 gc of z is equal to k okay. okay so this is a type 0 plant okay and this is a type 0 system so we already know that uh, the output is constant. What we need to do is y still state just using the uh, final value theorem. And since everything is a type zero system, it will be simply equal to g of one, one plus, okay, so there is no one here. Okay, uh, this is equal to g of, okay, that's not g of one times, okay, gc of one, and it will be equal to, I guess, so 2 over 
1 plus 2k. Okay, that's okay. So what's the result? K is our controller then it's a P controller. Okay, so our steady state error or steady state response disturbance is constant. Okay, uh, we know that we cannot eliminate it perfectly, but if we want to minimize it, it simply says that you should increase your gain k, of course, until uh, you like don't push the stable limits or you don't uh, disturb your transit performance a lot. Okay, but as k is increases, y steady state decreases, which is a good thing. Okay, good. So now let's change the result a, uh, a little bit and change our controller to a PI controller. Okay, KP plus KI Z or Z minus one. Okay, that's good. So what is the state state error? Okay, that's uh, kind of easy because uh, Y state state is equal to G1. Okay, because plant is still a type one system. One plus limit Z is going to one. Okay, so uh, G1 is here, and we need to put the controller here, which is equal to KP plus KI Z or Z minus one. Okay, so when Z is going to infinity, uh, Z is going to one, this is going to infinity, so this will be going to one. Okay, so uh, if you have a digital control system like this, which is a fundamental digital control system, and if you have a, a unit step type disturbance acting your control actions, Okay, your PI controller can eliminate the error perfectly. Okay, so the good thing is we know that in terms of steady state error, if you want to have a state, zero state state error for a tracking performance, we also need to implement PI control. So uh, the good thing is, so in terms of steady state tracking performance and disturbance rejection performance, having a high gain controller, and potentially type one controller, which is a PI controller or similar uh, family of controllers, is a good thing to do. So uh, performance in terms of steady state error and disturbance rejection, they technically they don't compete, they match. If you do the same thing, you will have similar uh, performance results from this perspective. Okay, so this is one type of uh, disturbance I want to talk about uh, in this lecture. In other lecture, I will talk about a different uh, important disturbance in digital control systems. But uh, my recommendation when analyzing your steady state performance with respect to a disturbance is not using uh, lecture notes or using uh, formulas. We already derived some of them. Just use uh, the final value theorem after finding a transfer function from uh, the disturbance input to the output. Because if I change the topology, these Gs and Hs can change, which can, can disturb your results.